Not many people know this, but outside of making videos about the most useless Overwatch information you could possibly imagine, I do a little bit of game development. Specifically, I work on a marble game called Marble It Up Ultra. Shocking, I know. There are a lot of interesting things that go into making a game, like level building, physics programming, and UI design, but it was the spawning system for the multiplayer side of the game that made me wonder, how does Overwatch decide where to spawn you? It sounds like a dumb question since you just spawn in the spawn room, but I wanted to know exactly where you spawn. In a game like Counter-Strike, understanding this kind of spawn variance is pretty important. Your spawn location on any given round can determine whether or not you're able to reach a specific sightline before your enemy. This has led to many discussions about this mechanic over the years, such as how it impacts team strategy, is it a good thing for the game, and whether or not it can be improved in the future. Yet in Overwatch, it seems as though nobody cares about this aspect of the game. It could be that spawn variance doesn't matter as much in a hero shooter, where alt economy and cooldown management generally matter more than the precise positioning and lineups of a tactical shooter. Or it could be that anyone who does care quickly gives up since there's little to no information on how spawn points actually work. So let's change that. What I thought was going to be a simple topic quickly spiraled into something far more interesting as I discovered some surprising things about the spawn points in Overwatch maps. But I'm getting ahead of myself. First, we should all be on the same page. What is a spawn point? Well, here's one. You can't see it because it's invisible. So let's visualize spawn points using a sphere to mark its position. A little pointy stick indicating your facing direction when spawning here. A color to display which team this spawn belongs to. And an ID number corresponding to this spawn point's order within the current spawn room. A typical spawn point layout looks like this. Six spawn points packed closely together, sometimes in a line, sometimes in a rectangle, sometimes in... whatever this is. There are six spawn points because Overwatch used to be a 6v6 game, which provided enough spawn points for each player to have their own spawn point. You can still allow six players to join each team using custom game settings, but the main game types in Overwatch 2 are 5v5, leaving one spawn point empty when everyone spawns in. So the question is, what determines which spawn point is left out? How are spawn points chosen? To find out, I spawned some bots. For a few hours. Trust me, it was the only way to find a pattern. So, are spawn locations determined by role? Maybe players are spawned alphabetically by hero name. Or are they spawned alphabetically by their username? Perhaps it's done in the order of their slot ID? No, of course not, it's completely random. Which was evident after about five minutes, but I kept spawning bots because it was fun. Actually, there is one stipulation. When a player spawns, their spawn point becomes claimed for three seconds. During this time, it is ineligible to be used by another respawning player. This is done to prevent players from spawning inside of each other, otherwise this would occur all the time at the start of the game. Though this can still happen by standing still for more than three seconds after spawning, in which case the spawn will no longer be claimed and players can spawn there again. And if every spawn point is claimed at the same time, the spawn with the lowest cooldown becomes eligible as a failsafe. So if the game ever becomes 7v7, the seventh player would still be allowed to spawn, even though there are only six spawn points. Random spawning does make sense, since it's easy to implement and gives all players on the team an equal chance to spawn anywhere in the spawn room. But with any RNG mechanic comes the question of whether or not it's fair. And this is where things get interesting. Because while some maps have spawn point layouts that mitigate this randomness very well, there are other maps where some spawn points are irrefutably better than others. Does this difference in spawn position actually have a significant impact on the game? For unbalanced spawn points, it's easy to measure the distance between the front row of spawn points and the back row of spawn points. We can use this distance to roughly evaluate how much of an advantage you receive by spawning in the front. Technically, it would be better to measure the distance between each spawn in the nearest doorway, but this requires a lot more precision in measuring for such a tiny change in results that doing it the easy way is good enough for our purpose. For these spawn points on Junkertown, there is a 1.77 meter gap between the good spawns and the bad spawns. But what does this translate to time-wise? Well, it depends on which hero you're playing. 
Movement speed in Overwatch is generally equal across the roster, but there are some exceptions. Ball rolls quickly at 10 meters per second, Soldier sprints at 8.25 meters per second, Tracer and Genji walk at 6 meters per second, and almost everyone else walks at the base movement speed of 5.5 meters per second. There are some other abilities that allow players to walk faster, like Lucio's Speed Boost or Junker Queen's Commanding Shout, but the vast majority of characters walk at 5.5 meters per second, so I'll be using that speed to judge the time differences between spawn points. This translates to a 0.32 second advantage if you spawn at one of these three spawn points, or if you're a glass half-empty kind of person, this means it takes about a third of a second longer to leave spawn if you spawn at one of these three spawn points. Watchpoint Gibraltar is a similar story. Spawning in the back row results in an extra 0.3 seconds of walking out of spawn. And Route 66 is slightly less forgiving, adding an extra 0.45 seconds of walking for the back row spawns. There are more maps with this staggered spawn point pattern, but the time differences between the best and worst points usually fall within this quarter second to half second range. This margin is small enough to prevent this from being a significant issue, though strictly speaking it is possible that it's enough to affect the outcome of a match. Think about a time you hauled it from the spawn room to the payload just in time to trigger overtime. Or the opposite where you just barely miss it despite taking the racing line. Had you been randomly assigned to a different spawn point, these incidents could have ended differently. Sure, it may seem like a contrived scenario, but we've seen even the most unlikely of occurrences happen more than once on this channel. It's like the infinite monkey theorem, but with Overwatch players. But I don't believe this is common enough to warrant an immediate redesign of spawn rooms, because while these spawn point layouts are suboptimal when considering pathing toward the main exit, a more fair layout would cause even greater disparities for the side exits. And the game's been out for over seven years, and nobody cared about this until now, which is a success in my book. So love it or hate it, this random variance is most likely here to stay. And originally the video was going to end here, but this is only half the story, because so far we've only examined the differences in spawn points within the same spawn room. What about the differences between each team's spawn room? For asymmetrical maps, the pathing between each team's spawn and the objective is so inherently different due to level geometry that directly comparing spawn points isn't very interesting. Symmetrical maps are where the differences between each team's spawn points would be significant, since both teams do take the same path to the objective. But why would there be differences? These maps are mirrored, so shouldn't the spawn points be the same on both sides? Well, yes. Sometimes. Take Busan Downtown, for example. Team 1's spawn room is a PC bang, while Team 2's spawn room is a karaoke club. These spawn rooms have physically different layouts, so spawn placement can't be identical across them both. To roughly evaluate the difference between each side, we can measure the distance between each team's average spawn position and the origin of the control point. This is once again a less than ideal method of measuring, since drawing a straight line between the spawn room and the objective subverts the actual pathing required to reach it, and because the objective's origin point is sometimes off-center with the map, but this provides us with a very quick and consistent test to find any possible imbalance. Given the difference in each spawn room's design, the distance each team needs to cover to reach the point is impressively equal. Team 1 spawns on average 94.6 meters from the control point, while Team 2 spawns ever so slightly further at 94.85 meters. These distances are close enough to where I wouldn't say one team has a serious advantage over the other. On New Queen Street, Team 1 spawns in a curling club, while Team 2 spawns in a subway station. Once again, each team's spawns are roughly equidistant from the pushbot, with no crazy imbalance. So far, this bodes well. Most other symmetrical maps use the same level geometry in each team's spawn, like these airships used in control maps. Since these maps are perfectly mirrored, there are no differences between- oh wait, they're different. This was one of the more surprising finds during this video, since I previously assumed that spawn points would be grouped with the airship prefab, and thus identical across each airship. But this isn't the case because airships are not actually mirrored across each side. Each airship has the same orientation in the map, and flips which side of the model has its doors open depending on which side it's on. So the door behind Team 1 spawn points becomes the exit door for Team 2, and vice versa. 
The spawn points were then, presumably, hand-placed for each airship instance, giving each one a slightly different layout from one another. Except for the new map, Samoa, which has a completely unique spawn layout. These inconsistencies are harmless on their own, but the spawn point layouts are different between both teams on the same map as well. The level editor for Overwatch has a mirror tool that's used extensively in symmetrical maps, so I'm uncertain why mirrored maps have unmirrored spawn points. Regardless, I went and checked every map to find unbalanced spawn points. Here are some of the highlights. Ilios Ruins favors Team 2 by 0.95 meters, which translates to a 0.17 second advantage. Busan Mecha Base favors Team 1 by 0.87 meters, or 0.16 seconds. Li Zhang Tower Control Center favors Team 1 by 1.03 meters, or 0.19 seconds. And now behold Colosseo, which favors Team 2 by a whopping 2.31 meters. This is because Team 2's spawn points are placed further up the spawn room than Team 1's spawn points. And you thought the glass was this map's biggest problem. This is probably the most egregious mistake out of all the maps, since this isn't just the average spawn position being advantageous, but rather every single spawn point being better than the other teams. No matter how you slice it, players on Team 2 just spawn further ahead than Team 1, allowing for slightly faster re-engagements every fight. I'm really curious to see what the win rate statistics look like for these maps. You would expect symmetrical maps to be as close to perfectly balanced as possible, but it would be interesting to see if these spawn advantages correlate to a slightly higher win rate for one team. Or maybe it doesn't matter. Speaking of balance, I'd like to give a shout out to Antarctic Peninsula for being one of the most balanced maps in terms of spawn point placement. The sublevel stage spawns each team exactly equidistant from the control point at 100.03 meters. The Icebreaker stage spawns each team 107.79 meters from the control point, and the Lab stage spawns each team... Oh, Team 1 actually spawns over 2 meters close to the control point. But why would that be? Okay, so Team 1 has 12 spawn points. The 6 spawn points in the back mirror Team 2's spawn points, but then there are 6 more placed further ahead. Since spawn selection is random, players on Team 1 have a 50% chance to spawn closer to the objective than Team 2. And I mean much closer, since there is a 6.33 meter gap between the worst spawn point and the best spawn point, which saves over one second of walking. The only reason I don't consider this to be worse than Colosseum is that there's at least a chance that both teams will spawn fairly, such as this match where nobody spawned in the front row a single time. But then of course there are other matches where players do get the lucky spawns. It's all down to chance. Since this map has a strange number of spawn points, I went back and double checked the number of spawn points in each map, just in case. The majority of spawn rooms in Overwatch have six spawn points, and the spawn rooms on Circuit Royal are no exception. Except for this one, which only has five. Horizon Lunar Colony, if you can remember it, has five spawn points in the Defender spawn room. Blizzard World has five spawn points in the Attacker spawn. Just kidding, there's actually six. What a silly little guy. Midtown has the most missing spawns of any map, with its grand total of four spawn points in the first Attacker spawn. The empty space between spawn points suggests that there were spawn points here that were either accidentally deleted or moved into an editor-only layer, preventing them from being exported. In any case, missing spawn points aren't a big deal. The only thing I'd consider to be a real problem are the unmirrored spawn points on mirrored maps. Admittedly, some of these imbalances are pretty minor and probably don't influence the outcome of many matches. But if the spawn points can be mirrored, then why not? Especially for Colosseo and Antarctic Peninsula, where the spawn points are especially imbalanced. I suspect these maps will be updated in the future, so to quickly check spawn points going forward, I made a workshop thing. All you do is paste in the code, select a map, press the interact button, and BAM! All the spawn points are displayed. It even works on deathmatch maps, which I didn't cover in this video because that's an entirely separate can of worms. But there is one deathmatch map I'd like to look at. Welcome to Workshop Island, a convenient place to test all sorts of things due to its simplicity. But behind its modest appearance lies something truly unhinged. The spawn points. On the surface, everything looks fine. 
there are 12 spawn points, one for each player in a 12-player deathmatch, that neatly follow the grid in a square pattern. Well, they almost follow the grid. None of the spawn points are actually aligned with the grid texture, as each one has a seemingly random offset. In fact, their heights are inconsistent as well. Most are placed 7 centimeters above the ground, while spawn points 3, 4, 6, and 12 are 8 centimeters above the ground. Speaking of which, what's going on with the numbering? Spawn points 1, 2, and 3 are in order, but then it gets all crazy. What I think happened is that these three spawn points were placed first, before being copied, rotated, and pasted to create the remaining spawn points, which for some reason randomized their order. Looking at the facing direction of each spawn point, this seems likely. 3, 4, 6, and 12 have rotational symmetry, 2, 9, 5, and 7 also have rotational symmetry. But 1, 11, 10, and 8... don't? The corner spawn points inexplicably break this convention. On second thought, what's going on with all of them? Most of the spawn points aren't pointing to the center of the map, so every time you spawn you're facing somewhere to the left or right of the origin. Well, with the exception of spawn point 3, which does face the exact center of the map. Absolute king. But wait, if the spawn points were rotated, then why don't 4, 6, and 12 also face the center point the way 3 does? Well, if you look closely, the average spawn position is really at negative 0.05, 0.07, 0 0.07, which means the spawn points weren't really rotated around 0, 0, 0, they were really rotated around this random arbitrary point, and it's really bothering me, please fix it! <laughs>